Hey everyone, it's Justin again. In the last couple videos, you saw how many steps full of complicated math it takes to solve a quadratic equation. But now I'm here to save you from that headache. In this video, you're going to learn about the quadratic formula, a much quicker and simpler way to solve quadratic equations. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to use the quadratic formula to find solutions to quadratic equations. First, you'll learn what the quadratic formula is. Then I'll give you a couple examples of how it's used. Then you'll have an opportunity to try an example on your own. This is the quadratic formula. I know it looks a little confusing, but once you understand how to use it, it makes a lot more sense. The a's, b's, and c's in the formula stand for the coefficients in the quadratic equation you want to solve. a is the squares coefficient, b is the middle coefficient, and c is the constant. We plug each of these into the formula, simplify it, and it tells us the two solutions for x. Oh, right, uh, it's because of this that we get two solutions. Remember, the plus minus symbol means the formula splits in two, one where there's a plus there and one where there's a minus. So this formula is really two in one, which means it's a shortcut with its own built-in shortcut, making it even shorter. Let's try an easy example. The quadratic formula requires us to identify three things. A, B, and C. Now we plug those in. The B's are 10, the A's are 2, and C is 8. Now we simplify to get the solutions. 10 squared is 100, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, times 8 is negative 64, and 2 times 2 is 4. 100 minus 64 is 36 the square root of which is six. And at this point, we want to split the plus minus so we can use the respective operations. If it's plus, negative 10 plus six is negative four divided by four gives us negative one. If it's minus, negative 10 minus six is negative 16 divided by four is negative four. The solutions to the quadratic equation are x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 4. And it took us way less work than some of the other methods that we've learned. Just like before, sometimes the equation isn't ready to use the quadratic formula. If you rewind, you'll see that we always use the quadratic formula on a quadratic expression set equal to 0. In fact, in previous lessons, we've had to do the same thing. A quadratic solution requires that one side be zeroed out first, no exceptions. So let's just subtract 2x squared from both sides, add 1x, and add 4 to zero out the right side. Now it's ready for the quadratic formula. a is 1, b is 6, and c is 2. We replace the variables with their values, and we're well on our way to a couple of solutions. 6 squared is 36, negative 4 times 1 times 2 is negative 8, and 2 times 1 is 2. 36 minus 8 is 28, which is not a perfect square, so we're going to need to simplify it. It's been a while since we learned how to simplify radicals, so let's review that real quick. We have to factor the radicand using a perfect square, and 28 is the perfect square 4 times 7. Now we could pull out the square root of 4, which is 2. Since the denominator is 2, we can go ahead and divide the two terms on top by 2. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. And 2 square root of 7 divided by 2 is just the square root of 7, because the 2 divided by 2 cancels out. We're now at a point where we can break the plus and minus of parts. Um, do you know what negative 3 plus square root of 7 is? No? Uh, what about negative 3 minus square root of 7? Don't know that one either, huh? Well, I was, I was kind of hoping he did, because neither do I. Oh, but wait! Square root of 7 is irrational, so both of these solutions would be irrational. We wouldn't want to write them as decimals, so we're actually better off just leaving them like this. 
This actually happens often. The quadratic formula will result in irrational solutions. So we leave them as simplified as we can get them without accidentally making them rational. In fact, since the solutions are the same except for the addition or subtraction sign, we can leave them in this combined form with the plus minus. Time for you to test your skills. Pause the video now and use the quadratic formula to find solutions to this equation. First, we need to zero out one side of the equation. Ah, that's better. Now we can use the quadratic formula. Notice that b was already negative 8, so negative b is negative negative 8, or positive 8. Now let's simplify a little. Negative 4 times 5 is negative 20, times 2 makes negative 40. Inside the radical, 64 minus 40 leaves 24. Finally, in the denominator, 2 times 5 is 10. Since 24 isn't a perfect square, we need to pull out a perfect square. Luckily, we know 24 is 4 times 6, and the square root of 4 is 2. Now, neither term on top is divisible by 10, but we can get creative with our simplifying. Each term is divisible by 2. 2 times 4, 2 times the square root of 6, and 2 times 5. So we can say that by dividing by 2, we're cutting everything on top in half. So we end up with 4 plus or minus the square root of 6, all divided by 5. That square root makes this entire solution irrational, and any attempt at making it a decimal will mess it up. So we're going to leave our solution, or solutions, just like this. The quadratic formula makes finding solutions to quadratic equations much shorter and simpler fully intended, and it makes it possible to calculate irrational solutions, which the other methods can't do. There's one more huge benefit to the quadratic formula, you'll find about that in the next lesson. See you then!